Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm going to share with you how to remove objects placed on complex perspectives in Photoshop. Take a look at this photo. We cannot just simply use the clone stamp tool right here. So if you go ahead and create a brand new layer, use the clone stamp tool, take a sample from right here. All right. Even if we try to match these lines, if we take it to the top, see the lines are not matching up there. Why? Because they are following a perspective. We're going to have to use some special tools, some special features in Photoshop to be able to fix that. And that's what we're going to learn today. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Wacom Tablets. And you already know I've been using one for years and years since I was a baby. Just kidding. If you are on your journey of mastering Photoshop, a graphic tablet is one of the best investments you can make because it gives you two things, precision and pressure sensitivity. And that's common to all graphic tablets. The one that I recommend is the Wacom Intuos Pro line. That's one of my favorites. I use the medium sized. So what happens is that it's not like a mouse, which is either switched on or switched off. There are levels of pressure and according to pressure, you can control a plethora of things. You can control the brush size, opacity, flow, scattering and take advantage of the features of some of the most advanced brushes in Photoshop. For example, if I go ahead and select the Kyle Ultimate Inking Thick and Thin, have a look. As I tilt the pen, the angle of the brush changes and that helps the brush to act very naturally. I don't know why I wrote satin, but you get the point. So if you want to check out the latest models of Wacom tablets and what I recommend, please check the links in the description. Back in the magical world of Photoshop. And if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now, the first thing is remove the easy stuff. That's step one. So now we know that we can easily cover the top part of the plant with the wall and it's easy to do with the clone stamp tool. However, it would leak into the table and the chair. So we need to make a selection to limit that. And the best way to do it is with the pen tool. So press P for the pen tool. Don't forget the shortcut for the pen tool is it's right in the name P. So let's start making a selection. So I'm going to start right in here just to stay a little on the safer side. And if you want to learn how to use the pen tool, go ahead and watch this guide. The more patient and accurate you are with the pen tool, the better the result you're going to get. Now to turn a curve into a corner, just hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on it and then it's now a corner. Click and drag to draw a curve. If you want to adjust anything, just hold the control or command and then adjust these points. Now you can go ahead and select some extras and finish the loop. All right. Once you have created the path, I would highly recommend to save it for later because who knows, maybe you might need it. So go to the paths tab right here. If you cannot see it, go to window and then make sure paths is checked. Now just rename the work path to something, right? To just something, all right? Anytime you want to have access to it, all you got to do is to just select that and you have the access to it. You will never lose it. To turn this into a selection, what do you do? There are lots of ways. One of the ways is holding the control or command and clicking on the thumbnail of the path. Now, before applying the clone stamp tool, we cannot just directly apply the clone stamp tool and apply it right here because that will give a very sharp edge. We want some feathering on it, some softening on it. So what do you do? Go to select, modify and then feather. Let's apply a feather of one or two pixels. One would be more than enough in this case. Now it might differ according to the resolution and you can do some trial and error to find out. Just do one stroke, see how it feels and it will clearly give you an indication whether you want to increase or decrease the feather. So with the clone stamp tool selected on a brand new layer, make sure you are in the layers panel. Just take a sample from above the plant and start painting right here. That's all you got to do. And we have that taken care of. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. And there you go. Have a look. The better the selection, the more patient you are with the pen tool, the better results you're going to get. Now, again, my friend, we need to take care of these leaves and we might need the selection again. But I accidentally pressed Ctrl or Command D and we might have even gone a couple steps into the future. We want the selection back. We don't want to undo stuff. So how do you get the selection back? And that's why I asked you to save the path. Just go to the path tab, hold the control or command, click on the thumbnail to get it back. If you want to feather it, you can do that as well by going to select modify and then feather. Let's go for the same values and again, select the clone stamp tool and then just 
fix that area as well. Hold the Alt or Option and then click to take a sample and fill over it. It's not filling. You know why? Because the selection is on the opposite side. Press Control, Shift and I to invert the selection. Now hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and fill on this side. Now we have a selection, it just won't go out. There you go. Press Control or Command D once you're done and the top area is fixed. Step number two is defining the perspective. Before you start to remove this stuff right over here, we need to define what the perspective is. By the way, before moving to step number two, do not forget to keep things organized. Just name layer one to anything, anything that can help you remember what it was. So for me, it would be removing the easy stuff. Now let's create a new layer on top of that and let's name this perspective removal. This is where we will define the perspective. Go to filter and then vanishing point. Just zoom in and with the create plane tool, the shortcut to which is C, just mark along the four corners of the table. Now adjust these points and make sure they are positioned accurately. Now, even though everything is so well aligned, there's still a gap right there because in the real world, my friend, things are just a little twisted, uneven or bent, just like my right nostril is a little bigger than my left one or the vice versa. I don't really remember. But now that you have defined the perspective, everything you do inside it in this dialog box will maintain the perspective. For example, even if you try to paint with something, so let's say I'm painting with white. It maintains the perspective. The further we take it, the smaller it becomes. The closer we bring it, the larger it becomes. And it adjusts its shape according to the perspective. Let's go back by pressing Ctrl or Command Z. Now it's time for us to move to step number three, which some of you might have already guessed, and that is cloning in perspective. If you have not noticed yet, there's also a clone tool that you can work with in the perspective. And in here, if you try to clone, the lines will match up. Now in the clone settings, there are some options. Diameter is simply the size of the brush. Hardness is simply the hardness of the brush. We want it to be absolutely soft. So we keep the hardness at zero. Opacity is the opacity of the brush. And this is an important one. Do you want to turn on the healing or do you want to keep it off? So what does healing do? To understand this, let's first learn what healing does not do. So if you turn off healing, now when you try to sample from a place by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample. And then now you try to paint something right here. Okay. It is just a simple copy paste with a brush. It doesn't change its texture, color or anything. It doesn't try to adjust just like the clone stamp tool. It's a dumb tool that just copies and pastes in a brush. That's all there is to it. However, if you turn on the healing, now when you try to take a sample and now when you paint right over here and when you release your mouse it'll try to match up it did a pretty bad job because we didn't cover everything but it tries to match up and sometimes dumb works better because then it's just straightforward and we have complete control over it so in this case we're just gonna turn off healing we want it to be dumb so that we can control them now all you gotta do is let's start from right here Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and then let's start painting. Match up the lines, make sure everything is aligned and then start painting. All right, this much is fine for now. Now I would suggest avoiding doing all at once. Doing bit by bit gives you more control over it and keeps the tone smoother. Take a sample from right here again. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and then we will try to paint right over here. See, we made the brush a little too big and it's also bringing up the edge of the pot. Let's try it again. Make the brush a little smaller this time. Take a sample again and start painting. Make sure everything is aligned. It's okay. You don't have to do all at once. Do bit by bit. Otherwise, you will begin to see lines right over here. All right, it looks pretty much done. We can fix the top area later. Now let's do this area. Some areas are still a little dark, no problem. Let's take a sample from right here. And this time we want to do a little bit of matching. So let's turn on healing and try to cover over it. 
there you go let's leave it it'll try to match it up and it has done a pretty good job press ctrl or command zero to just fit the canvas to the screen and there you go it's pretty much removed hit ok once you're satisfied the problem is still not completely solved have a look there is this area still left out we need to fix that it's simple select the polygonal lasso tool and let's make a selection of that area To keep it smooth, just give it a little feather by going to select and then modify feather. One pixel is fine, hit OK. And then with the help of the clone stamp tool, just take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample, make sure sample current and below is selected and then just paint. Easily fixed. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect and there you go. That's how to remove objects placed on complex perspectives with Photoshop. Let's do a quick little recount. Step number one, remove the easy stuff with the help of the clone stamp tool or the healing brush tool, the patch tool, whichever is your favorite. Step number two, define the perspective by going to filter and then vanishing point. Just define the plane. Once you have defined it, just remove or clone in perspective by using the clone stem tool right in there. And we learned healing. What is healing if you keep it turned off and turned on? If you keep it turned on, it'll try to match the cloned area with the surrounding areas. If you keep it turned off, it is just a simple copy and paste in a brush, just like the clone stem tool. And step number four is simply finishing touches, removing little defects here and there. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping me keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.